I'm right. super into 90s rap music right now. Perfect. I have what do you East mean Coast right or now? West Coast? <laughs> um, I prefer West because I came from that. So, okay. and uh, I respect that. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> 90s rap. Okay, so we're going to start Regulate. with this. Um. It was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Warmer G was on the streets. Representative Stoddard, you had a great bill today that passed out of committee. Do you mind talking a little bit about that and telling Representative Judkins, who is in a very conservative district? Okay. okay. So my bill is 267, Prohibited Persons Amendments. So what it does is it takes our existing code uh -huh. that makes someone a firearm restricted person and puts a process in place for them to actually verify that they've gotten rid of their guns. And so similar to a DUI, if a person pleads guilty in a DUI and they're ordered to get an ignition interlock, mm -hmm. they have to certify to the court. They have to give them a letter that says, I don't have a car or here's proof of my ignition interlock. Yeah. So it would be the same process. If a person becomes firearm restricted, they would have to present something to the court that says, I don't own any guns or I've gotten rid of my guns. And that's it. And this has been done in a number of other states, uh -huh. and it's been shown to decrease domestic violence, firearm homicides by 10 to 12 percent. It should get bipartisan support because right. it's very middle ground, and it's it's not taking it's not taking the rights away from people who have the right. It's just saying if you don't have the right already established under due process, then you need to make sure that you're following. Correct. Yeah, I think, and it gives them a roadmap, right, to yeah. learn how to do it. I think, you know, I think, I think that sounds like a good bill. I'll sounds like a it. solid yes. Sounds like a, that <laughs> sounds like a solid I'll yes. To, yeah. I'll have to look at yeah. it for sure. Uh, okay, let's talk about your bill, which is the best, it's one of the best bills of this session, I think, and one of the most important, because it impacts one of our fellows. It's 288. Okay. No, it's not. No, nope. that doesn't <laughs> sound right. That's a different bill. Is it 298? It's 211. Okay. Double digits. Okay. It's 211. I do have a 288, but this one's 211. Nice. And it's it's been a struggle, I have to say. Um, it it just would require landlords to disclose any fees that they're going to be charging with the rent up front before they accept an application fee or a deposit or any other money. So the thing is, is that. Um, it seems very common sense. It's obviously yeah. best practice mm -hmm. because what's been happening is that people go in and that they they say, "Oh, I can afford this apartment, right?" Mm -hmm. And and they'll call and say, "Are there any fees?" And they're like, "Oh, well, you know, we do have some fees, and there's this and that." Well, how much is that going to be? Well, we can talk about that when you come in to sign the lease, but they're not very much. But this or that, you know. Mm -hmm. So they think that they're disclosing stuff, but then when the person goes in, they do the application fee, and maybe put down a deposit so they can save this apartment. And then when they go in, they find out, oh, $300 worth of fees later, On top of. I cannot afford this apartment. And so they have to make a tough decision right then. They either have to make room in their budget for that apartment, or they have to back out, lose possibly the deposit, lose their application fee, Are you kidding? and start all over again. So, so what my bill would, says now after much negotiation is that if there are undisclosed fees that the renter chooses not to pay at the time of the lease, then they get any money that they have paid to the landlord back. Oh, and I love this because it's both consumer protection mm -hmm. and affordable housing. Yes. I mean, I think it fills yes. a huge void in this area. That Thank you. Well, yeah, we, we'll some, we get so many <laughs> negative emails, don't vote for this, <laughs> don't vote for this. I'm going to remember this vote on election day. Uh, um, uh, what we need is some emails saying, hey, we actually like what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. You know, we deal with a lot of heavy issues and it's great to get just a thumbs up from our constituents. Okay. Right. And so just an email or a text, it's easy. And I think for your bill especially, not a knee-jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, gun legislation, absolute no. Yeah. yeah. You know, because... Which is mm -hmm. the initial fear, Which right? That initial. everybody mm -hmm. I talked to about yours was like, uh, no. I was like, wait, 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 hear me out. Yeah. You yeah. might not hate it. Yeah, so I think if we, because we have to really think about it, you know, and sometimes it looks like, I don't know, like we haven't thought about it. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully we really have. Yeah. And, and so that's one thing I try to do is not do a knee-jerk reaction. Good. I, so good. I need your help selling my bill. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me go read it. Okay. I'm going to go read it. So thank you. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much. Now get out. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> we are out of here.